Okay. Good evening. Okay, my, my name's Randy Beerwagon, and I'm part of a ministry called Last Call Out Ministries. And part of what we do is um, do some training and practical, practical things. Uh, maybe it just needs to be closer. Okay. So we, we do some pr just practical training for country living type um, skills. We're also help, trying to help people that are moving out of the cities to re relocate. Um, and then we want these people to turn around, go back into the cities, and give the three angels messages from outpost centers. And that's kind of part of what we we're about, we have a table set up back here now with, we've got some cards and some information there. So feel free to look at that when we're done here. Tonight I'm just going to talk about it, just a couple of things here. Um, first of all, what do you do when the lights go out? Oh, well, a you got a generator, good. Well, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so, um, you know, I recognize a few of you here that actually live off the grid, so which means you don't you're not connected to the power lines, but you may have solar panels, battery power with uh, inverters and some equipment that gives you the power you need. So what do you do if you're not if you're not in that situation and the power goes out? What was that? Get your, oil lamps out. Get your oil lamps out. That's that's a good good plan to have. Yeah. So you you may have a, a freezer that needs to, you know, you need to keep going, or just you know some lights or some something that you just really need. Um, a lot of times it's like I said a freezer or refrigerator to keep your food from spoiling. Most of us have a car out in the driveway. A car has a battery in it. So I'm going to show you, and th these are some things you, you might consider um, just making a, a, an investment before you need it. Um, this here, and again, a lot of you uh, probably are, know what this, these things are, but this is called an inverter. And this takes your battery power from bat power from your battery, and it converts us converts it to house power. Now, you know if you're if you're powering a whole house, you would have a, a larger inverter that would power a lot more things. This here is a 2,000 watt inverter, something you can get pretty reasonable Harbor Freight. Usually you can get them with a coupon for under about 120 bucks. What you can do, I've made up my own cables. Um, I believe these actually come with cables. They're lighter duty, but I think they'll, they'll work. The other thing you can do is if you've got a pair of jumper cables, uh, you can either clip one end of these or cut them off, put some lugs on them, and you already got clamps on the other end. So for emergency, you can take your car, pop the hood, hook this up to your car. The black one's negative, and the red one is positive. Really simple, it's just that you need to be prepared if you're going to do something like this, have it ready. Now, I'm going to turn this around so you can see it. So it's got, yeah, you can just cut battery cables in half, and you'd have to get some lugs that you put on the one end that you can just bolt to this. Or, in a real emergency, you could just have clamps on both ends, and you just got to make sure that they don't touch each other. 
or you get fireworks. But you know, if that's the 4th of July, that's OK. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's better if you're prepared. You can put lugs on one end and bolt it, and it's permanent. Put it in a tote like this. It's ready to go whenever you need it. Just um, so. Well, it depends on what you're doing. Um, you know, in a car, of course, you can start the engine and it'll charge up your battery. So, I mean, if you're doing a heavy load, um, it's going to run down faster than just a few lights or something. If you had some LED lights, they take very little power. So that's something else you might think about if your house has just regular incandescence or, in, or something like that. Maybe switch those out. The bulbs are very reasonable now. They used to be expensive. Now they're pretty much not any more than your incandescence. So, so you're saying you can hook that up to your freezer then? Yeah, you could plug your freezer into that. Um, you just have to maybe have a, it'd be nice to have a battery monitor or something to show your voltage so you know when it's getting down. Start your car, let it charge up, you know. Um, so I'm just going to show you how it works. That's a tool that I use in the shop, 110 volts. So we're going to plug it in here. If I can straighten out the prongs. Turn the switch on. You got power. If you need to vacuum your house, I mean, you might not be worried about that in an emergency, but. Yes. Darlene wanted to know if an emergency blow dryer would work. I'm sure you could if it's a real emergency, yes. <laughs> So, I mean, they, they make different sizes of inverters. This is 2,000 watts. So whatever you're going to plug into it, you don't want to exceed those 2,000 watts. And usually on the back of your appliance or whatever, it'll tell you either watts or amps. Your amps times your voltage equals your watts. So that's a good way to, so in other words, this one here is 3 amps times 120 volts. So 360 watts. So that gives you an idea of what you can do with this. And you can, um, you can get smaller ones, you can get bigger ones. Um, I actually have this, I have the same, same one in my car, mounted under my seat. It's permanent. Um, I can use it wherever I go. Just flip the switch on, plug in whatever I need to use. I even have a, this will even run a small air compressor. And, and I'm a contractor, so I'm out and about a lot. Sometimes that comes in real handy. Um, my truck, I actually have a 5,000 watt inverter that used to be in my house. And I upgraded the house one and put that in my truck. And so I, I've got a 4,000 watt, um, but it, it's a little better one than what, you know, what I had. It's, um, and that runs, I, I run all my tools, all our household stuff. My wife's got a Vitamix. We got washer and dryer, all that. Um, propane, but, you know, it still takes electricity, so. Could you get by with that without a generator? As long as you have a way, you got to have a way to charge your battery. Yeah. So, I mean, if. Yeah, in, in a house, we would have, actually, we've got bigger batteries or a larger battery bank, maybe s several of these together. Um, we actually use forklift batteries, which are about 1,000 pounds a piece. So, you know, and, and so the more battery power, the longer it's going to run whatever you're running. Okay, well, generally, and this is what I'm going to add on or show you here too. Um, this is kind of an add on to this system, or what we do with the house, we'll use solar panels. Um, or, you know, if you've got a, a creek, you can use hydropower. 
There's di different ways, or you can use wind power. All those ways you can use to charge your batteries. In a, or in a uh, situation where, you know, if you're out, you've got solar and you don't have sun for days, then you do need a generator for backup, something, some way to get those batteries charged. But w this is what you call, this is a very small one, but this is a, uh, what you call a charge controller. And I didn't uh, have a spare um, solar panel to bring. The last time I did this, I had one. Um, but you'd set up a you know solar panel out in the sun, and this is again this is kind of an add-on to this emergency kit. You could have something like that, and you're not relying on your car engine or a generator. Um, but you'd have a solar panel. It's connected two wires to your charge controller. Your charge controller two wires to your charger. This is basically a battery charger but it converts the sun, the power from the sun. Um, in a house situation like, like we have, we're off grid. Um, we've got several solar panels, you know, a couple of big batteries, and the, the sun keeps them charged during the summertime where we're at. We rarely, if at all, need to run a generator. So those solar panels keep them charged up. Um, in the wintertime, depending where you're at again and how much sun you get, sometimes we have to um, run a generator some to kind of offset what we're not getting from the sun. But usually we'll, we'll still get quite a bit in the sun. In an emergency situation where you're just running a few things, you know, usually if your power's out, it's not for a long time. And just make sure your battery, if you have a, you know, if you're using a battery out of your car or something, just make sure it's kept charged. But if you have, if you're just, you can just hook this up to your car, run an extension cord to wherever you need, need to go, and you can always start your car and run it for a while to charge your battery. So that's just an emergency use. Um, again, you know, if you're living off-grid, you're hooked up, then you've got a much bigger, it basically works the same way. Just a lot bigger system. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can do this. You can take it camping. Um, you know. You could. I don't know that they're designed, they're not really designed for more long-term, they're more for a, a quick, you know. So I, I don't know how long they would last, probably not long. <laughs> but you can use those if, if for some reason you ran your car battery dead doing this. Yeah. You could use that to jump your car and, right. and get it charged up again. So the, that's a good, good thing to keep in mind. So I've got another presentation, but if you have any questions on this one, anybody have any other questions? Oh, no. yeah. So what about the 220? Uh, you, okay, so this, this inverter doesn't do 220, but you can get inverters that do. Like our house inverter, it, it does 220. Um, you just, you know, more money. This, this is just kind of an emergency thing, but yeah, if you're doing something in your house, most of the time there are 220 inverters. So um, usually, though, you don't, you don't want to run things like electric heaters, your electric range, electric hot water heaters. You're going to generally, people that are off the grid like that, they'll go with propane. So, because those really take the power, and unless you've got a huge system, you know, and lots of sun, then generally they'll, we'll go with propane with, with those kind of things, you know, your hot water, and, you know, most of the time you'll heat with wood anyway or something like that, but, you know, we have a propane wall heater just for backup. We rarely, if ever, use it, but, um, yeah, that was a good, good question there. Any, anyone else? Is there anything particular that you need to be careful of when you're hooking those cables when you cut them in half and hooking them onto the other side? 
Well, you know, and when you're hooking them up all to this and stuff, you're not going to have it, don't have it connected to your battery. Have everything else done, then you connect it to your battery. And this is just, just like your house power. You stick something in there, it's going to shock you. <laughs> now, the, the battery voltage, it's low voltage. It's not going to do anything unless you cross it with a wire or something. Then you're going to get a lot of sparks. You do some welding or something. <laughs> In fact, that's another thing. You can't actually weld with a battery. I've done that before. <laughs> so yeah, in an in emergency, most of you aren't going to probably do any welding, but some, something you can do. OK, so I'm going to go on to this next one. And this is actually what my wife should be demonstrating. but. Uh, couldn't get her here, so let me put this side here first real quick. Okay. How many of you have seen one of these? You got one. From my wife, okay. This is called a Saratoga Jack thermal cooker. Got a lid, open it. It's a thermal cooker, a Saratoga Jack. Sure. So this has a kettle that fits down in there. So what you do, this is a way you can cook without, say, like beans or something. Usually, you put them on the stove. They cook for hours, right, with your stove on. This way, you put, put your beans or your rice or whatever it is in here, put it on your if you got a, a range, cooking range, or use your rocket stove or put it over the fire or whatever, heat that up to a boil. Actually, first of all, soak for beans, you'll soak them overnight. Put that on your fire, whatever heat source you're going to use. Boil them for 20 minutes. Put them in there. Put the lid down. Now this, I'm going to show you something that's actually more efficient than this. But six hours, they're ready to eat. No heat. When, once you heat them up, you take them off the heat, put them in there. That keeps them hot. They cook. Rice, um, you can do that. Um, I think maybe, uh, I don't know, I think it's an hour or something. I think my wife said something like that. Go. That if you're traveling, you got, you got some you want later on, so you stop in their drive in or something like that. You bring your other uh, whatever the condiments that you got, yeah. And then you just sit in your car, go down two, three hundred miles, whatever is down the road, and you're ready to eat. You just open that up, it's ready to go. Yeah, did you hear, hear that? So, you, I mean, you could take this with you if you're traveling, put it on the heat in the morning, put it in here at lunchtime, you got hot lunch. Now, I'm going to show you what we've done that's even a little more, even more efficient. It works better. I built this box for my wife. Just a simple plywood box. It's insulated inside the foam insulation. So this, yeah. So she put, she put this, she uses the same kettle, and she put some towels around, put the kettle in there, packed some towels around there, and now they just stay there. That, that, you don't even use this. This is obsolete. You put that down in there. This 
so this is this is something I mean you could build you don't you don't even have to, you could use a cardboard box you could use yeah some just anything like that so I've got yeah so that goes in there and I got this on top and I got a lid and it'll do the same thing that does only better it keeps it hot all day and then and so you can use this like a like a crock pot you want to keep beans hot for the next three days or whatever you want to do take them out after you know I don't know tell you I can't tell you how many hours but you take them out put them back on the stove reboil them get or just bring them to a boil that's all you got to do stick them back in here and they'll keep they'll keep hot Yeah, you could, yeah, just as long as whatever you're doing is designed, yeah, and make, make sure it fits tight. Um, it, it came, I think it came with that, and in fact, you can get a separate, another small one that fits in on top of it, and you can actually cook two things at once. Yeah. Yeah. So you get it all, and the, the, and the uh, jack actually, the lid doesn't completely come off, just lifts up, a little spring load. Yeah. So, I mean, you can do the same thing with this. You can make, you know, two kettles, one inside the other or something, just, you know, a, a short, shorter one inside the other, but, you know, just like that. It, it will, like I said, like rice, um, it depends what you're doing. You have to experiment. But um, rice, you'll boil for about 10 minutes on your stove, put it in here, and it'll cook. It'll finish cooking in an hour, hour and a half. It's oh, done. It has to be partially cooked. You, you have to heat it. You have to heat it and start it, yes. But like beans, 20 minutes. You're not going to eat beans in 20 minutes after boiling them, so it finish, it finishes cook, finish cooks, finishing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Bill. You also want to make sure once you pull that lid off, pull the beans out, put it right back down again, because you're going to lose that heat just just from uh, evaporation. Yeah. Yeah, and you know if you if you take it out for lunch, and you eat whatever you're going to eat, there's still some left, just bring them back to a boil, put them back in there, and they're good for the next next meal. So, and you can do all kinds of things. There's, you can actually, um, you can do cakes and breads and different things. Your wife demonstrated baking. Yeah. And, I have done that, but she, I remember her. Yeah, you, you, can, you can just go online and, and maybe Google Saratoga Jack or something like that. You'll find people. Yeah, there's, there's going to be videos, and there's going to be people that have done all kinds of stuff, and they'll tell you how. So, I mean, you can get all kinds of information like that. Soups, yeah, you name it. Yeah, yeah, if you had it, say, in the freezer or something, just or whatever, or fridge, and you wanted to keep it cold. And you're going on a picnic or something, you could do the same thing, just stick it in here, cover it up. And like I said, this is just simple, this is plywood, but you could do, you could just take a cardboard box and pack it with insulation, make it so your kettle fits, and that'll work. What's that? Oh, I don't know. Probably 18 or 20 inches. Yeah. And it would depend, you know, what size kettle you're going to use. Just make sure, you know, get enough insulation in there, packed in there. And then, um, you know, you could even use a, a flower pot or something that's round. And it's already, well, it's harder to get that kind of insulation. But, you know, you could come up with something. 
But there's all kinds of ways of doing that. It's, it's just may, make sure you just insulate it really well. So, yes. I, I'm not sure. I think it may be the small. Yeah. So. Any other questions on any, either one of those things? Okay, I'm going to um, give you an advertisement. <laughs> Um, I think Dawn, she talked about hoop houses and growing and gardening and stuff. Um, we are, I'm planning on doing a actually hands-on demonstration how to build a hoop house. And how to build a hoop house for growing, gar gardening and stuff. Uh, where we live, we're up 3,000 feet elevation and we got, it's a little trickier to grow gardens, but we've started building hoop houses and we're actually growing some pretty good things. And I'm getting ready to do another one. And so um, I'm going to do a, a basically a hands-on demonstration. If anybody's interested in that, um, sign up for our newsletter over there. And it's newsletter and updates and that kind of thing. Um, and we'll let you know when we're doing that. It's probably going to be within the next two or three weeks. Um, I've done several of them, kind of improved them a little bit each time, and they work pretty well. So pretty simple to do. It doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, so if you're interested in that, just sign up or just let me know and give me your contact information. Um, you're welcome to visit us over there. I've got some books. These are kind of, these are basically for giving to your neighbors. Just a sharing book. Um, would like to have a donation if you can. But there there's some cards over there with a little more information about our um, our ministry. And there's also some some pens. You're welcome to take one per family. No, I won't say one for the family, one per individual. And that's it, if, unless you have some more questions. Thank you. We, that's, yeah, uh, we're, we've got one we're doing for our ministry. Um, it's a, eight by 24 tiny house. What we're, we want to do is build these for a couple reasons. Um, for medical missionaries, Bible workers, that kind of thing that they can be moved to wherever, a church property or a private property, uh, wherever they're going to be used at. And also for people that are moving out of the cities, it's a good uh, a transitional place while they're looking for property or building or, you know, looking for something. Um, this one we're doing now is we're actually going to sell it to just help fund a couple more. So it's going to be for sale. If anybody's interested, um, let me know. We're almost done with it. We've got a few little things to do, but, but yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Um, You got. We have 16 city lots. Oh. So we are going to talk to you guys. We heard about it before, but um, going with the, I would like to talk to you. Yeah. About okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.